What's up and welcome to the video. My name is Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, licensed pharmacist, functional medicine practitioner, and fitness enthusiast. I help clients resolve SIBO and other gut issues so they can look and feel their best. $500, $1,000, $2,000. When you add everything up, lab tests, medications, supplements, it can be extremely expensive, especially for treating SIBO. Nobody should have to suffer because they can't afford proper treatment. This week's video is going to be the balling on a budget SIBO treatment video. These are the exact things that I would do to deal with SIBO for the fewest possible dollars. I'll discuss diagnosis, treatment, diet, and supplements. I actually had a different video lined up to share with you this week until I got a comment on a recent video. It was a request to do this SIBO on a budget video, which I thought was a tremendous idea. Real quick, I'm grateful for you taking the time to watch my videos, to leave comments, whether you liked the video or didn't like the video. I read every comment that is posted. I'm always trying to improve and make the best videos possible to provide you with the most quality information. I'm really thankful for your engagement and support. All right, let's get started. Number one, diagnosis. Very first thing that I would do would be to try to obtain a lactose hydrogen breath test. If you're not familiar with this, it's a lab test that diagnoses SIBO. Basically, you drink a sugar solution and then exhale out into a device or tubes, and this measures the amount of gas that's produced by bacteria and microorganisms in your intestine. These hydrogen and breath tests are sometimes covered by insurance. If you don't have insurance, your most economical option is probably going to be the Food Marble Air 2, which is listed at $249. I know this obviously isn't the point of this video. It's more money than you'd want to spend, but you would just be paying for this one device one time, and then you can use it unlimited times after you have it. If you do have insurance, you may be able to get one of these tests either for free or at a reasonable copay. This hopefully will be easy, but it could be a pain in the butt to do. What I'm saying is you may you really need to advocate for yourself in trying to do this. If you do have a primary care doctor, ask them to order you a lactulose hydrogen breath test. If they order the test, you're all set. Take the test, review the results, and then follow my next instructions later in the video. If they don't order you the test or say they're not able to, go in your purse or wallet, get your insurance card out, call the number on the back. I know it's not how you want to be spending your time, but if you have to wait 45 minutes on hold and then you find out that the test is covered for you, you can go back, have a conversation with your doctor, Doctor and get this worked out. If you don't have a primary care doctor, establish care with one and ask them to order the test for you. Hopefully by doing these things, you're able to get your hands on a lactulose hydrogen breath test. If you are not able to do so, or they're just not available where you live, how you feel after eating may be an indicator that you have SIBO. Obviously this is not going to replace doing a breath test, but some signs that you may have SIBO may include you tolerate white rice better than brown rice. You can't tolerate most fruit. You can't tolerate beans or legumes. You feel your best in the morning right when you wake up. Your bloating and symptoms kind of all start after you have your first meal of the day. You feel your worst and are the most bloated in the evening after dinner. You may feel worse from eating a very strict healthy diet and then you may oddly feel better when you have a random junk food meal that you wouldn't normally eat. These are all potential signs that you may have SIBO. Next up number two is the treatments. We'll start with the treatments not to do. First one is the elemental diet. A standard two-week course of elemental diet can easily cost you over $500. No bueno. I'd probably also recommend not doing antibiotics. One key antibiotic called Rifaximin, the brand name is Zyfaxin, is a staple medication if you're doing SIBO treatment with antibiotics. It also typically requires an insurance pre-authorization to get covered, and even if you do get it covered, it can still easily cost $500, and I've seen people actually pay $2,000 for this medication. Seriously. Now for the treatments that you may want to consider. The first one is carnivore diet. This is the least expensive treatment option. Your grocery bill is your only expense for treatment. Granted, meat and animal products typically are a little bit more expensive than other food, but no other medications or supplements are going to be required. The carnivore diet does include an extremely limited variety of foods, and if you're vegetarian, vegan, this is obviously not an option for you. It consists mainly of animal proteins and fats. I made a recent video on the carnivore diet for SIBO and why I think it can be a good treatment option. If you haven't seen it yet, click the link here to watch. Important notice on carnivore diet. If you have diabetes, please use extreme caution with this diet. It is a zero carb, zero sugar diet. If you have diabetes, using this diet can potentially cause an unsafe drop in blood sugar levels. So if this is the case, definitely discuss with your doctor before starting. The other option is antimicrobial herbs. These are typically affordable options and there's a wide variety of different products you can use. I added two links down 
down in the description of this video. One link is a regimen if you have elevated hydrogen gas on your breath test, and the other link is for a regimen if you had elevated methane levels on your breath test, or if you had both elevated hydrogen and methane levels. Third item for today is diet. If you chose to do the carnivore diet, that is the diet. If you chose the antimicrobial herb route, any diet that lowers fermentation can be helpful here. Its purpose is just to lower symptoms. It's not actually going to be treating the SIBO. I personally just like the low FODMAP diet. If you download the fast FODMAP lookup and learn app, you'll have pretty much everything you need. It has which foods are low, medium, and high in FODMAPs, has a tool to look up pretty much any food, and tells you which type of FODMAP is in each food. So if you notice you have symptoms from a bunch of different foods, you may notice a trend that a certain type of fermentable food seems to be the culprit a lot of the time. And then you can avoid that specific type of FODMAP. It's also certified by Monash University, which they're kind of like the OGs of low FODMAP diet. I'm not affiliated with this app in any way. I've just seen it, tried it, and I really like it, and I think it has everything that you'll need. And last item number four is supplements. What you should do following around a SIBO treatment really depends on the breath test results that you get when you do the follow-up breath test, which hopefully you are able to do by following the steps I detailed earlier in the video in the diagnosis section. It is always a good idea to take a prokinetic after after doing a round of SIBO treatment. This helps prevent a recurrence of SIBO if you eliminated it, and maybe you didn't completely eliminate SIBO, but doing this still helps maintain the progress that you made through the first round of treatment. It's a good idea to purchase these prokinetics ahead of time, so right when you finish treatment, you can begin taking them. Two very cost-effective over-the-counter options that I have used and like are ginger root and iburagast, and for other digestive symptoms as well, feel free to include other digestive support supplements that you may need when going through SIBO treatment. That is all for today. To summarize, we discussed four things. One, diagnosis, getting a lactulose hydrogen breath test, hopefully for free. Two is potential options for treatment. We landed on the cost-effective options being carnivore diet and antimicrobial herbs. Three is initiating a low FODMAP diet. This is if you choose to go the antimicrobial herb route for treatment. And four is starting a couple key supplements, including prokinetics after eliminating SIBO or doing a round of SIBO treatment. Thank you so much for watching. If you did find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more similar content. Please let me know what you thought about the video and leave your comments down below. I'd love to see them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you at the next video.